So I've been using the Mac Mini M4 Pro for about a week now, editing videos, surfing the web, checking emails. Now this goes without question, starting at $599 for the base M4 model. This is probably the best value Apple product that you could get right now. Provide your own screen, provide your own keyboard, mouse, speakers. This is pretty incredible. You step it into Mac OS without breaking the bank and it's starting at 16 gigs of RAM. This is the first major redesign to the Mac Mini since forever, since 2010. And this is a well needed one, bringing the Mini even smaller in size. And for crying out loud, my iPhone 16 Pro is bigger than the Mac Mini, an actual computer. I mean, like, look, this thing is tiny. Like, look, it's so tiny. Like, this is it. This is the Mac Mini right here. And this is so small, in fact, that Apple had to relocate the power button to the bottom of the unit. After using it for a week, I have yet to turn off my Mac Mini. Now, I can see it being an annoyance, but the Mini is so small that you can conveniently just hover your hand behind the Mini and just press the power button easily. Now, there are some accessories to help press the button. It doesn't bother me. With Apple Silicon, everything is more efficient. You rarely need to turn off your Mac at all. With Apple Silicon, the entire Mac lineup is more efficient than ever before. It's one of those things where you don't really care to turn off your Mac. And, and even looking at some of the IOs here, uh, no more USB-A, which doesn't bother me at all. And for crying out loud, I don't even use the HDMI port. As you guys can see in the background, I'm using all studio displays. I'm just all in on USB type C. So four Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back and as well as two on the front and alongside a headphone jack, which is pretty neat. Having the Thunderbolt 5 ports on the front, super convenient for editing videos very quickly, uh, connecting dumb drives or even security keys, which I have to constantly have my security key plugged in to log into my accounts. Now I am gonna be working on a brand new desk setup featuring the Mac mini, and you guys can kind of see a sneak peek behind me, studio displays hooked up to the Mac mini, and I think this is a perfect monitor to pair it up with. Of course, Apple sells it. I actually have it hooked up to my CalDigit so I can be able to have an SD card slot as well as a micro SD card. And of course, you have my USB A's too as well. I'm sure there's gonna be a third party accessory to add in more ports to the Mac mini. If not already, they might be available on Amazon. Although two USB C's are good, you might want to have a little bit more, have that SD card slot, especially for my creators out there. And I think that's something that you might want to take in consideration. And, and by the way, if you guys want to see the desk setup, subscribe with notifications on so you guys can be notified when that drops. So in terms of the configuration, this is just a regular M4 Pro. So 12 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 24 gigabytes of unified memory, and a half a terabyte of SSD storage. Um, of course, you can spec everything up thanks to the Apple configurator, which is the most expensive upgrades. And I think that's a big mistake if you're gonna plan on getting the Mac mini, try not to upgrade too much things because you're very quickly gonna step into Mac Studio territory. Now in terms of my actual use case, I use Google Chrome most of the time just thanks to my Chrome extensions. And of course I use Lightroom for pictures on Instagram, Photoshop for editing thumbnails, and of course Final Cut Pro 11. I installed the latest update too as well. And I noticed having everything open, you guys know Chrome is infamous for eating up RAM. The 24 gigabytes of RAM goes by like this. So combine the Chrome tabs and Final Cut Pro and in the background, Photoshop. So yes, this is unified memory and all, but very quickly that RAM is gonna swap. Now what it means to swap is gonna use the SSD to hold some of the applications onto the SSD storage and it's gonna basically use it for RAM. The camera that I have, this is the Sony a7S III. Then I have a Sony a7R5, which shoots 8K. And then I have a Sony CR. So all high-end professional cameras. I'm filming in 4K, 422, 10-bit. And the Kodak on those videos are just, it's insane. And pairing that up double, because sometimes I do overheads, and then mix it in with my plugins and pair it up with third party plugins, which I use Motion VFX. It could be graphically demanding. You know, that's one of the things coming from an M3 Max. I didn't jump to the M4 
that is one of the things I miss. This is the Unbend M3 Max, so 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, and I actually added in two terabytes of SSD with 64 gigabytes of unified memory. Yeah, this thing is an absolute tank and I love it. And dropping down to the M4 Pro, with the watered down specs, yes, you definitely gonna notice a difference between the two. It was a bit of a struggle playing back at full quality with my Chrome tabs open and Photoshop open. It kind of struggled a little bit, just trying to push the full boundaries of the M4 Pro. So I decided to just quit out Chrome, quit out uh, everything else and just focus on Final Cut. And the performance was a little bit better but it's nowhere near as smooth as the M3 Max, which I came accustomed to. Coming from an M1 Max to the M3 Max, I noticed the speed boost, especially with the RAM increase, going from uh, 32 gigabytes of unified memory to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. I have more room to work with. And that's the thing, when you're a creator, a professional creator that is, you might wanna get something that have a little bit more wiggle room. So for instance, GPU is super important for videographers and graphic designers. So you wanna get something that's like top of the line, something that would be fast. We're constantly upgrading cameras, we're getting new plugins to see how we can uh, have an efficient workflow, increase the quality. So we're always looking for the latest and greatest to improve the content. But with these cameras, it's definitely overkill for YouTube, but I wanna make sure my quality is up to snug and everything is on point. And having those little hiccups, for me, that can add up. But that's just for videos like this, which by the way, this entire video was edited on an M4 Pro Mac Mini, the same one here. After this, I'm gonna go back to my M3 Max and I know I'm gonna notice a big difference. So videos like these and even my best earbuds video, which by the way, watch that. I edited that on my Mac Mini. But as for TikToks or short form videos that was just recorded on my iPhone 16 Pro and even 13 Mini for a secondary camera, it edited like butter. So I just came to a realization that the Mac Mini isn't for me, but I would say for the average consumer surfing the internet, checking your emails, using it as a family computer, I think this is gonna be more than adequate for uh, the average consumer. The M4 is an absolute beast. You have 16 gigs of RAM, finally. I just remember the days of getting 16 gigs thinking, oh yeah, I have the highest gig of RAM on my MacBook. Now that's the base uh, RAM on a Mac now. So that's kind of insane to think about. You're getting a lot of Mac at just the mini price, starting at $600 or even $500 for students. For me personally, the Mac Studio, that is the one that I'm waiting on. Um, what if it's the M4 Max or the M4 Ultra, which is gonna be absolutely bananas. I, I'm waiting for that one. The Mac Mini is probably one of my favorite Apple products Apple released this year. In all honesty, it's between the Mac Mini and the AirPods 4. Absolutely love the AirPods 4. And we gotta even give the crown to the iPad Pro M4 too as well. I would say Apple had a great year of products this year. And yeah, the iPhone 16 was a bit on the weaker side just due to the delay of Apple intelligence, but I don't matter. Apple intelligence is here right now and I'm having a blast using it, which the Mac mini has support for thanks to Mac OS Secura. I've been using the writing tools left and right all the time. And now that I have Apple intelligence, I really can't go without it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this one helpful. If it did, I appreciate it with a thumbs up. Comment down below what you guys think. And other than that, I hope you all have a simple day.